the basics of property rights of private law is that you own your own body, which means you're the one who gets to decide who get, if something is done to your body, which is the distinction between rape and consensual theft and uh, consensual sex. Right, and you're the one who gets to decide if you first use a resource that was unowned, like you pluck it out of the state of nature and start using it. That's called homesteading or original appropriation, and you have the ownership of that thing because you were the first to use it, uh, unless you give it to someone else by contract, in which case they have the better title. So these very simple rules that you own your body and you own a resource if you were the first to use it or if you got it by contract from a previous owner. Like those three rules are the basis of all private law. And if you apply them very consistently, that's that's when you get the libertarian conception of these rules. Like we just don't make exceptions. Um, the conventional legal systems of the world follow these rules in a rough way, but they make lots of exceptions. Like, you know, you own your property usually. Unless the government needs to take some of it in the form of taxes to fund their army, something like that. So normally you're the owner of your property, your crops, let's say, unless the government takes some of it, which we would call theft in a private setting. You know, So that's the basic background. Now, if you understand property rights in this way, then you will understand why the attempt to assign ownership to ideas or knowledge, which is what intellectual property does, patent and copyright law… You will understand that it's in conflict with these basic principles because a patent, for example, gives the owner of the patent the right to stop another person from using his factory to make a, to make a product. So it's telling him what to do with his own property when he was supposed to be the one that had the right to do that because that's what property rights and ownership means. And copyright's very similar. Uh, the copyright holder can prevent someone from using their printing press. To print a book, right? Um, because it 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 has a certain pattern on it that's similar to the pattern you put into your book. That's the argument there. So the copyright gives the copyright holder a partial ownership right in your printing press, and even in your body, if it can prevent you from saying something or singing a song or performing um, a play or something like that. So the problem with these rights is ultimately that they they take away, they redistribute. Property rights that are assigned according to the natural way, and they reassign them to someone else. So they they're, they they're tantamount to theft. Now the consequences of this is that um, uh, although patents are granted, uh, the system is justified based upon the idea that it encourages innovation. It actually does not. It actually uh, impedes innovation because it makes it illegal for someone to. Use their property in a way to compete with someone who has a patented product, so they don't bother to innovate in, say, trying to improve the product because it would be illegal to sell that product because it's patented. So they don't bother to innovate. And likewise, the person that gets the patent on their innovated product slows down on their innovating because they don't need to innovate anymore to keep customers because they have a monopoly for about 17 years where they're free from competition.